Hey carnivores, SP fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal, and this is... An SP guy. Steak and Butter Guy. And you guys have probably seen him appear in quite a few of my videos now. We really wanted to do a couple conversation, sitting down and sharing with you guys our top five least favorite things about the carnivore lifestyle. And as a carnivore couple, we're gonna provide both of our insights and perspectives Let's just jump right into it. So one thing I hate about being carnivore is the constant judgment that come from friends, family, and non-carnivores in general. And it's important to note that the judgment is not always malicious. It could be very neutral. Um, it can even be framed in a way where it even sounds positive. But regardless, you're always kind of being noticed for having a meat-centric diet. Would you yeah. agree with that? Definitely. Do you remember our trip to Montana with my siblings and how at the dinner <laughs> table I was literally being crucified by the friends of my big sis? Like they were the guests and I truly felt like I just needed to be polite and not get all heated mm. or offended. But they just kept throwing questions at me that were truly unnecessary and like comments that was starting to piss off steak and butter guy. There was this one uh, unnamed individual who uh, goes to Bella like, I'm a doctor. I've been in med school for five years. You don't think I know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, you're killing yourself. You're going to die. Yeah. And, you know, for people who know me personally, uh, <laughs> I can lose my temper pretty quickly. Yeah. So especially when it concerns people that I care about. So I immediately kind of start losing my cool. But in a desire to avoid family drama, Bella kind of looked at me and was just like, let it go, let it go. But I know it doesn't feel good for her, right? So really what we're talking about here, this social ostracization, not only pertains to carnivore individuals or me-centric individuals, but also their loved ones and their friends mm -hmm. um, who are also affected by this. So the social stigmatism is very real and it has uh, a domino effect in a way. So that's something I, I hate about it. I, I personally believe that you have to treat everybody the same and you know, you can disagree with people, sure, but respectfully. Yeah, I would say like the more unpleasant experiences that I had to kind of sit through and just accept is with strangers more so rather than family and friends. Like family and friends, they're always trying to be polite. They're not trying to be rude or aggressive in any way. Although sometimes they might not know that it's coming off that way, but they mean well. It's mostly like guests or people who I don't really have a personal relationship with. They just start making snarky comments. They judge totally. They give you those looks. Bella, you know, she holistically cares about what everyone has to say, which I think is a double-ended blade. Because on one hand, she cares a lot about everybody. And some people are going to appreciate that. But some people are uh, kind of going to be ignorant of that and say very hurtful things that she takes very seriously. For me, kind of different. I care very much about what my loved ones say. But as far as strangers go, uh, I'm acutely aware that you don't know me. I think when you put yourself out in the world online, there's always going to be people who judge, who try to criticize, who try to pick on you. But for me, what keeps me going every single day, putting out the content, working hard, is knowing that I'm really helping a lot of people out there heal. Heal from things that I myself suffered with my whole life, like eating disorders, skin issues, acne, which I know acne can really just plummet your self-esteem. I want my fellow ladies watching to know that you can be confident just by changing up your diet, you know, eating more meat. Doesn't even have to be all in strict carnivore. 
just eating more meat and cutting out the crap will make such a huge difference like when we're carnivore out in the real world in social situations try your best to not be so in your head about like oh my god people are staring at yeah. me yeah, people are right. judging me try your best to just own it i know it's easier said than done people yeah. are too concerned about themselves to really care too much about what you're eating and what you're not it's only the people who need to get something out people who are having a hard time of their own mm -hmm. um and don't have any better avenue or channel to get it out they just find the closest thing and they invest their negative energy that way yeah now, with that being said, let's talk about the flip side, like the positive mm. of this topic. Mm. Because of us going carnivore and being a carnivore couple now, we have had the absolute pleasure to meet some of the most amazing human beings. Oh, carnivore people are awesome. Fellow carnivore human beings. And one of the most notable experiences is our recent, very recent trip to Costa Rica. Oh God, those people were so cool. By the way, we went to Costa Rica to film for the Reverse docuseries season three, mm -hmm. which is all about the carnivore diet. Shout out to Dr. Ch Chafee, Dr. Kiltz, mm. Dr. Barry, Kelly Hogan, Emily Harvo, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ovadia, Dr. Uh, did I say Dr. Kiltz? Let's say him again. Dr. Kiltz, because we love him so much. There's uh, not a single person you mentioned just now that isn't just awesome. It's someone that I yeah. wouldn't hang out with Seriously. on a Saturday night. Meeting all of these fellow carnivores in person, it totally solidifies my belief and confidence in this lifestyle. Because mm -hmm. I see, I saw with my own eyes just how healthy and glowing and vibrant these people are and the way they carry themselves and converse with me the way that they're just so warm and welcoming um it just made me so happy to know that like wow my fellow carnivores are some of the most awesome human beings mm -hmm. ever and speaking of happy people if you want to be a happy person <laughs> go join the happy gang otherwise known as the sb gang otherwise known as the happy people who invite other happy people like Dr. Kios, Dr. Chafee, Kelly Hogan, all the above, <laughs> okay, to come give happy meetings to encourage happiness. Yeah, that's literally my passion right now is community building. My logo for the Steak and Butter Gang is literally the meeting place for exceptional people. And it truly is that egg exceptional people. <laughs> the happy place for happy people. And just a heads up, for the month of February, we will be featuring Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Elizabeth Bright, Ben Azadi, and Dr. Jamie Seaman as guest speakers. So if you don't want to miss their exclusive live Q&As, make sure to sign up at SBG Meetup or at the links down below in the description box. You will also have access to eight hours of live Zoom calls every single week with my team of coaches. You can submit your questions, what you need help on, and the coaches will answer in each live. Live Zoom call. In addition to that, you will have access to the full 90 day fat loss program. Just take a look at some of the amazing results our members have gotten by following Coach Raymond and Coach Emily's fat loss program. Again, for more details, just go to sbgmeetup.com or check out the links down below in the description box to join the happiest community there is. We'd also love to hear your thoughts. Do you struggle with social situations, being a social person, or do you find it effortless? Okay, second point. Grocery shopping. I think this is one of the most <laughs> overlooked, tangible environments to feel ostracized. Hmm. Because you're walking into this place that's filled with people and filled with all kinds of different foods, non-carnivore foods, right? And you see the vast majority of people buying things that you've abstained from mm. and on that long journey to the meat section of the grocer the butchery is always in the very back so that's that's a long walk of looking around and seeing everyone else under the same roof getting stuff that's non-carnivore mm. and when you get there yeah there's a few people waiting in line uh, ready to get some pork belly or a couple steaks but they also have all this other stuff in their grocery cart right yeah. so you know, one of the funniest things is we go for our daily grocery run. Yep. And after making our order, the butcher goes like, oh, you having a barbecue with the family tonight? I got it like a family of six or seven. I'm like, right. dude, this is like dinner for, this is food for the next few hours. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, you know, for the same thing. For two people, by the way, not a party. Right, right, right. 
And then also checking out, right? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, at checkout, I'm always so curious to see what other people are buying. There are very few people only buying large quantities of meat, right? So that's another situation that I feel a little you know, ostracized in. The grocery store, mm. being there and having an acute, tangible reminder that, dude, you're doing something that most people are not doing, mm. right? Yeah, and I could totally see how that could be a difficult situation, like a daily task that people have to almost overcome. Because if you're still kind of like addicted to sugar and having those carb and um, sugar withdrawals at the beginning of carnivore, yeah, going to the grocery store can be such a <laughs> tempting, tempting slippery slope type of task. The ice cream is always the first thing they they always have like the sale party foods and stuff. Yeah, so it can definitely be dangerous a great many times in my four years long trying to get on a strict version of this diet, which I'm officially on, right. by the way. I have gone to the grocery store and on my way to getting something that I intended to purchase, like eggs or yogurt or something, yeah. I end up going for you know, like an Oreo or maybe you know, chips and salsa. <laughs> That kind of thing. And that's okay. Like, if slip-ups happen, slip-ups happen, right? Yeah. But if I can offer a tip, before going to the grocery store and really, like, braving that task, especially if you're kind of new and shaky with being committed, still overcoming those cravings, eat something before going to the grocery totally. store. Like, do not go in there empty stomach. Third thing that I hate about carnivore diet is that it requires you to rewire and re-understand your hunger signals. I'm slowly realizing, especially on a strict carnivore diet of red meat, salt, and water, that I am much more sensitive to being carb satiated and carb unsatiated versus being carnivore satiated, mm. carnivore unsatiated. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm not really sure when I'm hungry or not. I know when I'm craving things for sure, but craving is not equal to hunger. For me, I learned the hard way because when I went into carnivore, I had like this huge appetite. It was very alarming and scary because I honestly felt like there was never a point where <laughs> I would stop eating and be full. Yeah. So for me, that was my learning curve is like, just how much does it take for me to feel satiation, you know? And for anyone who may have similar experiences as me, where your appetite is increasing, um, it definitely calms down. That appetite calms down. There is a bottom to your bottomless pit of a stomach. There will be. As long as you just kind of keep feeding yourself and don't fear the fat, keep eating the meat that you crave, don't feel like you have to hit certain macros, at least not in the beginning. You can tweak that and play around after you're adapted. But the first month of carnivore, literally eat what is appetizing to you. What do you crave? What sounds delicious? You know, be creative with those meals if you have to, or just eat steaks every day or ground beef mm. every day, you know? And eat multiple meals. Don't try to force yourself into the OMAD box from day one. Under eating can bring a lot of symptoms, low energy, headaches, not sleeping well. So really just try to make sure you're eating enough, you know? The first time I ever met her, I look at this beautiful, talented woman with a tiny waist and this big bubble butt. What and I'm heck? thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking she must be on a juice cleanse. Like that's all she drinks is juice. I've met a thousand other people just like her. I get to her apartment, it's like five pounds of steak <laughs> on a plate. And I'm like, what the, f <laughs> I'm like, what is that? <laughs> that's all I cooked for him too. During our first days when he would come visit my apartment, like all I had was steak and eggs. So I cooked him steak and eggs. Do you find that you kind of have clearer signals of hunger and fullness now after being pretty adapted to carnivore? Definitely, you know, especially because recently I've been doing a lot more extremely intense exercise mm -hmm. with Dr. Baker. Mm -hmm. I find that I'm almost always hungry. Um, Makes sense. I'm almost always hungry. So 
I've definitely been upping my intake of animal proteins. Yeah. After eating, I, I never feel brain fog or anything like that. Digest pretty quick, and before you know it, I'm hungry again. Check out our interview. We both actually interviewed Dr. Baker just a few weeks ago. It's on my channel. It's an excellent video if you're interested in working out. You can also check out my personal oh, yeah. Instagram page. Once in a while, I post videos yes. of working out with Sean. Uh, in my stories. All right, next thing is the effects on exercise. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely feel that while I may have more sustained energy during exercise, that I have less uh, explosive power, at least right now. Maybe because I'm still adapting to a stricter version of the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. But I find myself getting pretty gassed if I have to overexert myself on low repetition high weight training. Mm. And I find that at the end of the workout, I'm my body is is <laughs> my body is um uh, depleted. Is depleted. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Do you I, feel like you have more endurance when you were eating carbs? I feel that I would have more explosive energy. Like if you ask me to do box jumps, I feel like I'd perform better with carbs. Yeah. At least right now. Right. And then what about recovery? Is it easier as a carnivore? So to be honest, these workouts with Dr. Baker for me are so grueling that I don't think any food source on planet Earth would make a difference in recovery because I am just getting killed out there. Yeah. However, Dr. Baker himself told me that the carnivore diet, one of the biggest perks for him personally, has been increased recovery benefits, which especially at his age of 56 years old, you gotta be thinking to yourself, this guy really has a point. Mm -hmm. It's really important for him to perform at such an obscene level, naturally, mm -hmm. without the help of any PEDs, and especially at his age, recovery is key. And mm -hmm. he's saying the carnivore diet, one of the biggest perks, is its recovery benefits. And for me, I have a different perspective just because I went into carnivore, zero workouts. I said goodbye. I knew that my relationship with working out in the gym was in a very bad place, very unhealthy. Mm. I kind of viewed working out and going to the gym as punishment for eating bad the day before. Mm. So like I would work my butt off yeah, that's just to good. burn off whatever foods that I ate the night before. I always had this bad relationship and I viewed working out as something dreadful, dreadful. Something to compensate rather than yes, something to- to support and uplift my life. To upgrade, Yeah, that's right. So, you guys all know, I released a three things I'm saying goodbye to in 2023 video. And I specifically said, I wanna say goodbye to being sedentary and not going to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. So I- You've been good about it. Yep, I wanna work out more. I wanna do whatever Steak and Butter Guy is learning from Sean. Bella's probably doing about 30 to 40% of the workout routine that mm -hmm. I'm doing with Dr. Baker on any given day that I'm training her. But it's tough. It's Definitely not easy. I wouldn't feel good doing those workouts myself and she's yeah. been doing really good. And I think naturally your your ability to physically recompose is above average, I would say. Mm -hmm. If you guys want like a full day of us working out and what we eat to recover, to fuel an inside footage of his workouts with Sean, let us know. Comment it down below if you'd like to see that. Incorporating more workouts. I think I've done about eight now so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. And it's very empowering. Lifting heavy things is mm -hmm. definitely really, it, it pairs well with the carnivore diet because you get hungrier, you have a bigger appetite, mm. steak and meat taste better. Sure. I've been definitely seeing uh, much more definition, uh, not only from the decrease of body fat, but also from a slight increase in muscle mass as well, yeah. pretty quickly, I would say. So that's a huge benefit of exercise on the carnivore doy. 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 Are you Actually, speaking German? Deutsch? <laughs> Deutsch. And if you're new to the carnivore lifestyle and you want to get started, usually the adaptation phase can be a little bit tricky. And what I always recommend is making sure that you just salt 
heavier and generously on all of your carnivore meals. You can either do that or lean on some high quality electrolyte supplements like this one from Element. I really like this brand because it is high quality and the ingredients are very clean. The flavor that I always recommend is this teal colored box. It's the raw unflavored one. There is zero stevia, zero colorings, dyes, flavorings, and you get only the three electrolytes that our body needs, sodium, potassium, and magnesium, all measured out for you in the right quantities. You all can get a free sample pack with any purchase by going to the URL shown on the screen, drinklmnt.com slash SPGAL. I've also linked it down below in the description box if you want a clickable link. Now we're gonna wrap up with the last, one. last thing, the boredom of the eating experience and how it necessitates you to actually learn how to be a decent cook and maybe not for the reason you might think carnivore diet although you have all the cuts of meat all the different types of animal meats right then you have seafood and then you have eggs and eggs can be cooked so many different ways and then you have dairy even though we have all of that people will miss the different types of textures I think the mm -hmm. most interesting one that I have heard from my community whenever we have like community calls and we're bringing up what we're struggling with, mm -hmm. a lot of people miss that acid, the sour, tangy mm -hmm. flavor. You don't get that on the carnivore diet, you know? True. Although I have found some tips and tricks. If you're missing that sourness, tanginess, get yourself some kefir. Mm -hmm. And yeah, kefir gives you that sour, tangy hit. That's true. Or another trick is apple cider vinegar. It's not carnivore, but you can kind of utilize that in your broths. And don't be afraid of spices. Those who love spicy, hot flavors, you don't have to miss out on that. Spices are totally fine on the carnivore diet, and it can really just rev up your meals and add so much more flavor. Mm -hmm. People also tend to miss like the crispy crunch. Chicharrones. Like chicharrones, yeah, that's a great one. And another crispy, crunchy snack that we love is carnivore crisps. And the great thing about this one is they have all cuts of meat. You can get chicken breast, beef brisket, ribeye, elk. They even have dog treats. And the ingredients are literally the meat and Redmond's Real Salt. So it's an excellent clean snack for those who are craving for that crunchy crispiness. Just take a listen at the crunch. Or panko. Pork panko. Panko. Bread everything, all of your favorite meats in a layer of mixed up raw eggs. So it has something sticky. Mm -hmm. And then dump that pork panko, like bathe that meat in pork bathe. panko. Fry it up in some tallow or butter and you will have some crispy meals right there. So like you said, mm -hmm. sometimes we have to be a bit more creative. What I love most about carnivore is the absolute utter simplicity. Mm -hmm. So simple. I know exactly what I'm going to eat every single day. I know exactly how long it's going to take me to cook each meal. And that's about like five minutes every single day. Overall, uh, relative to an SAD, you have less variety of foods. Of course. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be difficult for some people. But hey, on the flip side, guess what? You're eating the best, most delicious, most nutrient dense foods available on this planet we call earth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the fact is people who are eating a little bit of everything they'd be thrilled to get a great piece of fish or steak or maybe if you're super fancy a lobster tail or some jumbo shrimp mm -hmm. on you know for dinner on any given day of the week yeah i'm curious for those who are watching would you ever complain if you could have steak and butter and eggs every single day Maybe you're already doing that and you're getting so tired, you're getting that meat aversion, mm -hmm, palate fatigue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So where, like which boat are you guys in? Do you get tired of it or do you love it and you'll never get tired of it? Comment it down below. In the steak and butter game, we have a designated thread just for all 10,000 members to share their daily meals, mm -hmm. their favorite recipes. You get photos, recipes. Um, we have our own exclusive cookbook made by our amazing coach, Emily, like he said. And so if you're looking for support and you just want that one-stop shop for everything, connection, recipes, meal ideas, coaching, guidance, guest speaker Q&As, there's like the list goes on, you get it all so that you can succeed on Carnivore. You can join the Steak and Butter Gang, the Happy Gang. The Happy Gang. That's like the new nickname. Happy Gang.
yeah i'll put the url on the screen if you guys want to go and visit or click the links down below in the description box. And just a heads up, for the month of February, we will be featuring Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Elizabeth Bright, Ben Azadi, and Dr. Jamie Seaman as guest speakers. So if you don't want to miss their exclusive live Q&As, make sure to sign up at SBG Meetup or at the links down below in the description box. You will also have access to eight hours of live Zoom calls every single week with my team of coaches. You can submit your questions, what you need help on, and the coaches will answer in each live Zoom call. In addition to that, you will have access to the full 90-day fat loss program. Just take a look at some of the amazing results our members have gotten by following Coach Raymond and Coach Emily's fat loss program. Again, for more details, just go to sbgmeetup.com or check out the links down below in the description box to join the happiest community there is. Right now it's 10.07 p.m. We really wanted to talk about this and film this for you guys. That's why we're very calm in this video and just relaxed, you know? Simba's definitely sleep. Look how he's sleeping. Let me, let me try to turn sleeping. the camera. All right there, Simba just cuddling up with us every time we film. It's like his lullaby, he just goes to sleep. Okay guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. Do share what the most inconvenient, maybe dislike things about carnivore lifestyle that you have experienced down below in the comments. We would love to know. Please don't forget to hit subscribe, like if you enjoyed it, and turn on those bell notifications to not miss my future videos. Love you guys so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. SVG out.